The absolute highlight of the budget this week was the penetrating coverage in the Murdoch press, quoting, Treasurer Jim Chalmers' wife Laura stole the show in a buttery Carla Zampatti dress. Now the key word here is show. The budget show has been running for three weeks now, as it does. And what's the scam with budget night? Well, this is merely the grand finale, as is the tradition in the political duopoly. All the cash splashes had been carefully choreographed and dropped to the friendly media duopoly each day for weeks to win positive media coverage, all but one or two, which they save for the Tuesday evening, as predicted by Michael Pascoe here. A $300 energy bill rebate for everybody, even Gina Reinhardt. A magic wand, as Pascoe put it, because this savvy little measure has the dual purpose of lowering inflation and addressing the cost of living crisis in one fell swoop. Dastardly trick, they'll be calling it in the opposition ranks. Now, the budget show dragged on through Thursday night with Peter Dutton, not the shadow treasurer, Cayman Islands Angus, doing his budget reply speech. On cue, Peter hammered the Albo government for reckless spending and inflation. He couldn't say where his cuts exactly were coming from, except migration, which is xenophobic dog whistling wrapped in a policy of sorts. Migration is a problem. But there was an actual policy there, which is a sensible move and a novel one. Ban foreign property buyers, at least for a while. Because, of course, the budget did not touch negative gearing or CGT relief or the Airbnb rort or the anti-money laundering legislation, which is meant to be coming at some time much. The things which drive property prices affordability. These are the things which drive the affordability crisis in property, but so do foreign buyers. So there's a policy. Eat your heart out. The curb on migration and stopping foreign buyers will help put a break on rampant house prices though. Otherwise, Dutz drifted in dictatorial style in his budget reply speech into a bunch of things which had nothing to do with the budget. In his reply to something or other, he denounced knife crime, immigration, Islamist terror, the fake anti-Semitism crisis, and asylum seekers, of course, and blamed Labor for the housing crisis, even though the coalition had just been in power for nine years. The coalition media duopoly lapped it up. Murdoch front pages praised Dutton for getting back to basics. The budget show is all about votes, of course. And therefore, it's all about Albo in the middle and handouts for all, including the wealthy. Now, Albo hails from the New South Wales Labor left. Housing Commission, did you hear? And he's made it all the way up through the rough political thickets of the New South Wales Labor Party dominated by the right-wing faction. To lose to Bill Shorten only, and then to come back and win an election and seize the ultimate chalice prime ministership. It's quite an achievement from the left. He didn't do this without savvy political antennae, of course. And that antennae tells him that our, well, that thanks to our compulsory voting regime, that Australians vote towards the middle. Now, Murdoch has dragged the coalition boneheadedly out to the right. The minor parties and crossbench are progressive, so Albo is hogging the centre ground. The big prize, of course, is a second term. So do the budget. Everyone gets a prize. It's a fruit salad. You might not be keen on the kiwi fruit or the grapes, Well, there's some pineapple in there for you. Everybody gets a tax cut. Even billionaires such as the Mona Gina and Anthony Pratt get their $300 energy bill rebate. In that, this is a bourgeois budget, which has left Albo losing skin from both the right and the left. But as everybody gets something, voters will feel the love in cash. It is likely to work 
It's smart politically. There's a dash of vision via the Future Made in Australia Act, $22 billion to appease the climate mob and those who complain that there's not enough vision in government. Dutch junked this in his budget reply. He junked that Future Made in Australia Act. He's going to rip that apart. In his reply, in his renewables to raid, while the fossil mob, the party lobbyists and donors and the Murdochians they get their 30% rise in fossil subsidies. There's no arguing about that from Dutton. The political duopoly is on the same page. So here we have another $3 billion for the diesel fuel rebate, which the bulk of whose benefits go to the mining, the big mining companies. Defence and the US shipyards building nuclear subs get their billions, which they will if history is any guide at all. Urinate up against the wall. That's the price of empire and being part of last century's global rules-based order gang. But the budget highlight for mine was the question by Monique Ryan, the independent teal, to Albo after the budget in question time, outing the government for its $5,000 ahead budget night fundraising gala. Were there any fossil fuel lobbyists there, asked Monique. Albo put on a command performance in not answering the question. And that was the end of it. But the big winners, of course, are the Fossil Fuel Brigade, which managed to pull another $3 billion in subsidies and have locked in gas drilling past 2050, thanks to the future of gas strategy boondoggle. Check out this chart on subsidies. The other key takeaway is not the structural deficits, which Peter Dutton railed on about in his budget reply speech, too many public servants and so on. Two years now, Labor have put on surpluses after nine years of deficits. But the problem, of course, is structural inequality. It is that Australia is increasingly becoming a nation of rich and poor, thanks to government policies. The budget, as all before it for many, many years, does nothing to address the rise in inequality and unfairness. Superannuation perks in their billions are still there, which mostly wealthy people enjoy. The detriment, the Zoomers and the Millennials, the measures are there to fix it, just not the political will. So the scam of the week, indubitably, goes to the budget show. And incidentally, lucky Jim Chalmers taking a punt on budget night that the RBA would go for the deflationary energy play, that $300 rebate thing, and the next move in interest rates would be down. He got lucky that very evening when US inflation figures were released, showing inflation easing, good for Australia. And then the jobless figures came out Thursday, showing higher unemployment in Australia than expected. So economists all switched their forecasts to being the next move down in interest rates by the Reserve Bank. Nice work. Well done. Thanks for your support. Please like, share and comment and throw us a few bucks on Patreon if you can afford it.